What's up, everybody? This is Steve Morales, a.k.a. The Master Closer. Check this out. Today, we're going to be talking about running comps on single-family homes, how you can come up with a maximum allowable offer on the subject property within seven minutes or less. Please make sure you click that subscribe button, that like button, notification bell, so you get notified whenever I drop some content. Let's get right into it. So here we are on prop stream. Uh, now, before I get started, if you do watch my show every Friday at 12 p.m. EST, the deal desk where I call your leads throughout the country, doesn't matter where they are. This is the exact same process that I do um, while I'm on the phone. Now, obviously, I can't run comps while I'm on the phone and show you what it looks like because these are other people's leads uh, to keep them private and confidential. But basically, I'm going to show you the exact same thing I do in my business on deal desk anywhere in the nation. I'm being, um, I've been using PropStream for a long time. You can check out a seven day free trial. If you go to deal data.com, I'll drop the link in the description. So let's get started. Okay. So I'm just going to zoom in here. Let's choose a, uh, a random property in Tampa. Okay. Let's just go over here and, uh, I don't know. Let's just pick this property right here on uh, Clifton. Yeah, we'll just pick this one. All right. So let's pretend Mr. John is calling me in regards to this property in 1302 East Clifton Street in Tampa. Okay. Now it's really important to know that when you're speaking with a homeowner, not only do you have to know why they want to sell when they want to sell, but you have to also have to know basic information about the property. Something that I try to avoid is asking questions that can be pulled up in public records because sometimes if you're asking a seller um you know like what's the square footage of the house is it block or is it frame these are things that you can pull up online and not to say every homeowner does but does this but some homeowners will say well aren't you an expert can't you pull that up on your end that will happen right now i do ask how many bedrooms and bathrooms because a lot of times they may add or convert something like a lot of think times here in florida um you'll get people that want to convert the garage you know um so it, it just really depends on the seller and their property but i always ask about the condition of the property and really what i look for uh while i'm running comps is bedroom bathroom square footage and condition obviously okay bedrooms and bathrooms are important i think in my opinion square footage is a little bit more important because if you are uh, if you have a, a similar property and you're running comps on a similar property with similar square footage you know whoever you assign it to or when you flip it you can always add or remove bathrooms or bedrooms okay but um it's really important to know that when you're running comps try not to go above 300 square feet or below 300 square feet now when you're anchor pricing which i'll also talk about in another video you can look at whatever property it is but when you want to laser focus on specific comps you will, don't want to go above or below 300 square feet or within that range okay prop stream does a pretty good job refining it automatically um so it's just much easier to run comps. so anyways mr john calls me regards this property on 1302 east clifton street let's just pretend it's in fair condition by the way Anytime I'm running comps, as soon as I ask the homeowner for basic information, I always categorize them in three buckets. Number one is needs full renovation. Okay, these are properties that are super distressed. Uh, you know, nobody lives in it. Um, it's just really, really bad shape. Okay, number two is fair condition. Now, this bucket is most of the people you're going to speak with, right? Maybe it's outdated. Maybe the it's tenant occupied, you know, maybe they live in it, but it's not fully renovated. Okay. It's just in fair shape. It's clean, but it's outdated. And then you have fully renovated. Okay. Now I like to consider fully renovated within usually the last five years. Um, it's in tip top shape, you know, updated kitchen bathrooms. And if somebody says the house is in great shape, whenever you ask them, 
Do you know when the bathrooms and kitchen were last updated? That'll really tell you more or less what kind of bucket it will fall in. But the point is, figure out which one of those three buckets your house falls in, and then you're off to the races. You want to look at similar properties. Okay, so anyways, I see here this is a 2-2, 1360 square feet. Okay, and I do pay attention to the lot size as well because that does add value. Um, okay, so on props, I'm going to click comparable nearby listings. And it automatically refines the square footage here and it goes back a year. I only like to go back right about a year, you know, because the market does change. All right. So um, it refines the square footage for you in a good range. And the first thing I do is I look at the price points. You know, a lot of markets, um, you know, it could jump all over the place. And Tampa is a very diverse market. So you can have a million dollar house next to a mobile home park. You know, that does happen. So you look at these price points, 255, 336, 323, 358. Um, you know, the highest one sold here is 358. But I, I see these are pretty common, okay? So I see these price points. The next thing I want to do is I want to look at the cash comps, right? So what I'm going to do is go to public record sales situation. I'm going to click cash buyer. Okay. See how it refines this for us. One, two, three, four. Okay. Blue means foreclosure, but we're looking at, you know, um, cash transactions. And look, 295, 230, 260, 205. Now cash comp isn't always going to be... Um, an LLC or a business, right? It, sometimes individuals do pay cash, all right? But the goal when you're running comps is you want to see what are cash buyers, uh, businesses, LLCs, buying similar properties for. And you simply just want to stand underneath that as much as you want to make. I know a lot of people use a 70% rule. Uh, you know, I haven't used that in a long time. I find it's a little bit more effective just to look at the current market standards and see what our cash buyers buying for. Okay. So um, typically the higher cash comps are individuals, you know, in, in the market right now as of 2021, the market's crazy right now. So people are paying uh, a premium, but I like to start off with the lowest one so I can filter this by the amount and I'll start off from low to high. And usually the lowest ones is a good anchor price. Okay. Remember anchor price is not your offer. It's just a way to see how motivated the seller is. Okay. So we see 180 here, number six, which is right across. All right. So I'm going to click number six. I'm going to click details. It's, oh, it's going to open up a new tab. Now when this new tab opens up, keep in mind prop stream already, um, you know, factors in the square footage. It goes back a year. So what I do also pay attention to is the year built. This one's 1928. This one's 1964. Okay. For when you're running comps, you don't want to compare like a 2021 to a 1950 house. It's going to be different. Okay. All right. So actually look, Balawi LLC bought this property and we're going to see they bought it for 180. You can click the transaction history. Uh, actually, a lot of LCs bought this 39. I mean, this was 2010. Okay. Some of these may be wholesalers, all right? They actually close on the property. But the most recent one is Balawi LC that bought this 180 cash, right? In April, not too long ago. All right. So based off of this, remember, this is the lowest cash comp I see. So in my mind, I always start off with an anchor price. But so far, I see an LC bought this for 180. So my max offer so far is only 170. Now it's important to also look at more comps. You don't just want to look at one cash comp and say, Hey, that's your max offer. Cause again, you could be leaving money on the table. Okay. Another thing is this value right here is kind of like a Zestimate. It's usually within 20%. It's not always spot on super accurate, but it's usually, um, within the range. Okay. So 353, these people bought it for 180. They got a pretty good deal. Okay. Let's look at another one. We see number five, Let's zoom out a little bit. Now, number five is right here. You want to be very careful when you're crossing major highways or bodies of water. I usually don't like to do that. I'm very, um, you know, picky about the area. You can look at it, but keep in mind, like this may be a completely different neighborhood. Uh, really depends on what market you're in as well. All right. But let me, let me keep looking at these. I see two, three, and six. So number two sold for 230. Number six sold for... 180, that's one we just looked at. And number three, so for 260. So let's take a look at this one here, number two. Now this does have photos. 
Oh, it says photo coming soon. I guess it's not on there yet. All right. So anyways, let's look at it. Number two. They bought this for two thirty. I'm a, again. I'm gonna click details. Let me close out this tab. I don't like too many tabs open. So we're gonna open up this tab and we're gonna do the same thing. Okay. Look, another LLC bought this property, uh, and they bought this for two thirty. Okay. Now keep in mind. Uh, look at this. Look at the square footage. It's, it's the same. Same bedroom. Same bathroom. The year built is also similar. Okay, ours is 1928. I mean, this one's a little bit newer, but it's not drastically different, right? Now, I'm not sure why it's uh, not showing the photos, okay? But this is why it's so important, um, you know, based off of the photos, you want to see what kind of condition it's in. And if this one is in similar condition to what the homeowner of the subject property described to us, they bought this at 230. So that means my max offer is now 220. If I want to make $10,000, we try to make a minimum of at least $10,000 in every deal. But you notice how this cash comp here sold for 180, right? So this could be an anchor price just to see how they, you know, react. Because remember, if you know me, I don't like giving offers. I give offer ranges. So when homeowners don't like giving me the number, I want to give them the lowest uh, sold property in the neighborhood. And then they'll either like it or don't like it. But I know for a fact, now my max offer actually went higher, right? So it went from 170, now it's to 220 if I want it to sell for 230. Okay, does that make sense? Hopefully it's making sense. Um, you know, I'm trying to go very slow step by step. So right now, my max offer is 220. This is a similar property, bedroom, bathroom, square footage you're built. We can't see the photos, but again, I just put it in three buckets. I'm a very simple person who comes to these kinds of processes and making offers over the phone. Just put it one, three buckets. As long as it aligns with, again, what the seller tells you over the phone, there you go. So let's look at a little bit more, right? So we saw this one sold for 230. What about this one, number three, right here, the sold for 260? Let's click on the details for this one. This one may have photos. Let's take a look. Let's X this out. Number three is right there. Okay. Um, so number three, we're going to, again, click the transaction history. Now this one, you can see photos of it. Okay. Now this is what I would actually put in fair condition because this isn't fully renovated. It's very clean, but it's, you know, it has carpet. Um, you know, obviously, you know, th this is stuff that's not, uh, up to date, right? It does have stainless steel appliances, but look at the bathrooms, right? <laughs> um, it's not updated and they bought this for 260. So again, if ours is in similar condition to this, now my max offer is 250. Okay. See, I'm doing this step by step. You're going to get the grasp of it, uh, fairly quickly. If you take, you know, a lot of practice, but this is an LC operator property, JLC bought this for 260. So now remember anchor price 180 and we saw one that. Uh, we saw some cash con. This one sold for 230. So now my max offer is 220. But this one sold for 260 cash. So now my max offer is 250. Okay. So hopefully you understand how I do this. Um, this is just a really great example. Uh, let me show you one last tip. Okay. One last tip. So check this out. You see this flip comps right here. This is actually a fairly new button prop stream uh, added on here. So you can actually click this. And it's going to show you all the flips in the area. Now, properties that have been bought and sold within a short time period, um, it takes that data. So you're able to uh, tell pretty quickly what they bought it for, what they sold it for, even a gross profit, right? Now, keep in mind, there's a lot in the area. You do want to start off with the closest ones, right? So if I put this on full screen, you can see that this is an intersection. I, I kind of want to stay in this pocket, okay? So let's go back to the data. All right. Now you can see here um, the purchase price they bought it at, how much they sold it for, and what the gross profit was. Now, some people did lose money. That does happen. But you're able to tell pretty quickly what your max offer is. You remember that one we saw that the investor bought for 260? Look, somebody bought this for 266. They flipped it for 298 and they made about $31,500 gross. Okay, so it looks like investors are paying um, 
pretty, you know, pretty uh, high in this area. Make sure that you do your homework. Remember, not all of these are going to be investors, um, but you do want to take note of these. Though so this one, number one, on 49 East Paris Street. If I click on this one, I click on details. Let's do about this. If it's an LLC, our uh, max offer could potentially go much higher. And I wouldn't be surprised that you could offer a little bit higher in this area uh, if your property is in good shape. So this property, let's see. Yeah, again, so this isn't fully renovated. Okay, let's take a look. I think this is in good shape. Um, I really want to see the kitchen bathrooms. Yeah, look at the kitchen. This is not renovated. Now, was this an investor? Look at this. Nest Central Coast LLC. They bought this for two ninety five. dollars Let's take a look. Yeah, 303. Looks like somebody lost some money here, but Pinellas Equity LLC bought this for 295. So my max offer conservatively is 285. Do you see how much I can go up the more I look at the data? Now, this is a hot area of Tampa. Uh, you know, some markets may vary, but this is a great example of how you're able to quickly determine what your max offer is. So in the previous steps that I showed you, yes, it's good to look at the data, but make sure that you really use this button flip cons because that can really tell you a story of what your max offer is. Okay. That this button right here, I use a lot. All right. While I'm on the phone, I, I analyze and it, you know, homeowners will tell you the grass is so green. I put this really great uh i had this guy told me he put like some kind of rare italian marble in the bathrooms that doesn't really determine what my max offer is right because again i'm just assigning the property all right so make sure that you look at what are the cash buyers buying for really use this flip comps bun because that's going to allow you to quickly analyze what your max offer is make sure you practice this uh, i will drop the link go to dealdestdata.com to have a seven day free trial prop stream. Have a great day, guys. And make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Take care.